Hello friends, welcome back to the bench. So a few days ago, maybe it was like a week, uh, who knows, uh, we took a stab at this 600 watt power supply, which does not turn on. And we identified that the relay is not supplied with um, 12 volts. And if we short manually, let me show it to you here. So if we create a short uh, between this pin and this pin, right? The PSU turns on. Uh, however, the voltage is too high, right? We also identified that from here, I don't remember which uh, particular ones, but somewhere in this region over here, uh, we connect directly to the driver and um, the driver transformer, right? So this, we did identify that this board on the other side is responsible for driving the main transformer. <coughs> so I removed the board. And the heart of our device is a CM6901. That's a chip designed pretty much for this. And usually with these chips, when you go to the data sheet, you have typical application diagram or schematic of typical applications. And usually the typical application will be almost exactly what you see on the on the PSU. Not always, and it kind of depends on the chip, uh, but usually that gives you a good idea how it will be applied, right? How it will be used in the circuitry. So armed with that knowledge, what I identified is that <clears throat> our VCC pin, which is this one, is supplied by this transistor. It is pulled up by this resistor. So if nothing interferes, this uh, delivers roughly 17 volts, something like that. That's why when we make the short between those two pins, um, third from the right, so this one and this one, if we short these two pins, then we physically, you know, we force the 17 volts to go to the supply pin, the VCC pin. That's why the PSU turns on. <clears throat> now it turns off because this transistor, um, and this is NPN, and this is, I think, also NPN. Let's see. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, they're either 2X or 2T, and they're NPN and PNP. But I think both of these are NPN. Uh, so this one actually pulls the gate or the base of this one low, which disables the power. <clears throat> it basically turns off this chip. And that is controlled by this pin over here. Was it this one or this one? I have a little diagram over here. It's this one. So if it's high, it's off. It turns off because it pulls this transistor base to ground. So it basically turns off. So this is our off pin. And now the rest of the circuitry is relatively simple. Uh, this is our main bridge. This is what drives the transformer, uh, the insulating transformer, and then the insulating transformer drives the transistors, which in turn drives the main transformer, which produces 12 volts. And from 12 volts, we produce five and whatever else we need, uh, but in this case, only five. Only five and twelve. <coughs> um, uh, these are the equivalent. Actually, it looks even better on the schematic. So our four transistors are these. The 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 four transistors I just showed you. They drive the the drive transist uh, the transformer, the insulating transformer, because our primary and secondary sides are insulated galvanically. 
And then the other four on the left are these, these four transistors. So now, all we have to figure out is why this pin is pulled up high. And it will be pulled up high if, if I find it here, yes. So this transistor is connected, uh, uh, well, this, this uh, resistor is just bridging it, um, but it's connected to a standby voltage. So there's always five volts over here. And if it opens, it delivers five volts to the pin that disables our, I think it was this pin. Uh, yeah, uh, yep through the zero resistor, right? So if we have high here, if we have five volts here, the, the power supply turns off. Both the chip turns off and it, there's no driving, right? It, it doesn't get, it doesn't get power. So this transopter in turn is driven by, uh, and if I remember correctly, by this transistor, which is fine. And this is base collector emitter, right? So our base is controlled by this pin on the primary side. Here we are on the primary side, right? So for some reason, primary side is disabling secondary side because something is wrong. And that's the chip that controls it. So this one will turn off our secondary side or our driver if it detects that there's something wrong with either supply voltage or it's hard to say. But this is basically what's wrong with this with this device. So now all we have to do is dig out this board and reverse engineer, see what's up, see why it's turning off. And this chip is what produces our standby, uh, five volts and 17 volts on these on uh, this transformer. We have, I think, five volts here and 17 volts here, if I remember correctly. So this one works fine. That's why if, if there is no standby, something is wrong with this chip. It doesn't actually look um, like typical chips that are responsible for that. Usually on them, this pin is missing. This one is not connected. Or was it this one? Or maybe it was this one. But basically one of those pins is missing, separating the high voltage pin and the rest of the package. Because it's uh, supplied with um, high voltage, well, high voltage. It, it uses a voltage divider to drop the voltage because it requires very little current to work and it in turn it just drives the transistor, which is this one. Uh, this is the gate, drain and source. And as you can see, source goes to the transformer, which in turn produces voltage. So that's how five volt standby is produced. And but nothing's wrong with our standby. All we have to do is figure out what this chip is. So let's get on it. Alrighty. So what this chip is, is a PFC circuit. Typical application is like this, right? We have uh, 700 mi uh, micro Henry coil over here, which is driven by this transistor, which just boosts voltage, right? Because that's what 
power correction is basically it just boosts the input voltage now I thought this was a, a passive PFC on this one because I saw coils but sometimes it's both passive and active in this case at least it is so uh, this is driven by the gate um, and I actually couldn't really figure out why this was going high right because it's not supposed to but I noticed that I have 15 ohms between the base and the meter uh, the collector was fine but base and meter it was almost short but that's how sometimes semiconductors don't go completely short they just turn into resistors and that is the case of this little guy that was the whole issue with this with this uh, power supply so it was sitting here and it also d did not want to desolder and when we check now let's see if I can uh, do it oh, come on yeah so there is like 19 ohms right now between these two which is no good no good because that causes the base signal to just go directly to our emitter which in turn causes our transistor to open permanently and permanently disable the driving circuit so now all we have to do is figure out what this transistor is because I can't see any markings right now doesn't mean they're not there this must have overheated or something well now it's overheated because I used hot air to blast it with so I can desolder it but um, this will be the issue to find the replacement for this yeah it looks like 619 all right so all we have to do is just find 619 transistor and replace it and the power supply should be working just fine <laughs> sometimes it's such a minute issue but to find the fault you really need to pretty much reverse engineer the entire device to understand how each part works and what prevents it from working power supplies are relatively easy in that aspect because usually it's all about the voltage there's no data being transmitted so there's no debugging of you know protocols or anything like that on motherboards it can be tricky especially when you you're not sure why but you know like corrupted bios or you know pch issues or that kind of stuff but in some cases all those MOSFETs that are placed on the, the motherboards um, work like uh, logic gates and their purpose is just to deliver voltages and usually it is uh, when, you, uh, when you do have the power sequence description on the schematics uh, it's usually you know uh, some voltages need to appear in um, starting with the first one then the second third and so on and then those transistors kind of work like logic logic gates uh, like if we have those three signals then we generate this signal and you know it is also can be figured out but there's so many different aspects to the the motherboard repair because um, there's so many of those signals that need to be correct for the board to turn on um, and the reason for that is so we don't break anything <clears throat> basically if the board starts having some issues say shorted transistor if if it's not protected properly by all this logic around it 
then you can send 12 volts to CPU or higher voltage to external devices. And the idea is that if the board has a failure, it doesn't work, then it only that component, only that device should be malfunctioning. Nothing else should be broken. It's not always the case, obviously, especially when you have um, ish, um, when you have faults <coughs> resulting from uh, thunderstorms and stuff, where you have really high voltages, and it basically fries half of the circuitry. But this one will be a fix as soon as I locate 619 transistor. It's very, um, I would say, rather unusual fault. I did not expect that. Usually, when those things break, when the power supply breaks, it's usually either the, the chips themselves or cups or transistors and I mean the actual power transistor this one is not a power transistor it's just a tiny little switch so I'm not sure why this failed in this manner um, but that's why that would also explain why we are seeing higher voltage when we boot it manually and we force it to work it does work, but it produces 14 volts instead of 12. Or was it 15 volts, something like that. So that would explain it because we're working on the lower voltage, lower input voltage, not the voltage that the device was designed to work. I mean, you would expect the voltage to be, to be lower, not higher, uh, but <laughs> you know, if, if there is a reference voltage and it expects, um, you know, you expect it to be at five volts, say. So uh, you use that as a reference. And if you have lower input voltage, then that reference could have dropped to maybe three volts, which would explain why you have uh, two volts more on the output. So that is um, that is the main reason, or that is the reason why we have higher voltage on the output than we expected. But this will do for today. Um, this will be a fix. So we, uh, and kind of a tricky one, I must say. Uh, it only, normally, probably I would have given up on this one and just use it for parts. Uh, but, you know, I just figured yeah, I'm going to dig a little deeper. And I'm glad I did, because now the device should, should work correctly after replacing that transistor. Alrighty, that'll do. If you guys have any broken PSUs, you got my number, send them in. Um, especially when it's a powerful a PSU. This one's 600 watts, so mm, kind of average at this point but if it's 850 or higher or kilowatt or 1200 watts there are some like that definitely send it in we'll see maybe it's repairable some of them can be sold by uh, for uh, decent money <laughs> alrighty thank you guys very much for watching I do appreciate you and I shall see you in the next one